Hi, I'm Emma Miller and welcome to episode four of Art This Week Bio's Conduit Gallery. In this series of videos, we explore the history of Nancy Whitenack and Conduit Gallery. Here, we speak with artist Jay Sullivan, who has shown with Conduit Gallery since 1990. We speak with Jay to give a perspective on what the 90s were like in Deep Ellum, his thoughts on Nancy's move to her current space on Highline Drive, and what it has been like to work with her for the past 25 years. Now for our interview with Jay. So we'll start out. Um, how okay. did you and Nancy first meet? Uh, Nancy and I first met actually before I came to Dallas. Um, I was teaching up in Massachusetts at Amherst College and had entered a sculpture show that was put on by what was it, the Texas Sculpture Association, I think that's what they went by. I don't know if they're still in existence. <clears throat> but they used to do a huge show every year that was, had a national call. And so I sent a, a piece down, a, a big straw figure, and came down to the opening, and um, that's where I met Nancy, who had you know, merely kind of said that she liked the work, and um, I thought that that was it. I never imagined myself in Dallas. Um, but in actuality, the next year, uh, I took a job at SMU, and so was down here. Um, and as a result of that, I don't quite remember exactly what the contact was, but um, you know, very early on in that time, I talked with Nancy again, and she just asked if I was interested in showing, <clears throat> which to me was quite surprising, because I, A, had no idea that I was going to be in Dallas, and B, I had no idea that I would be in Dallas and would relatively quickly uh, be able to show. Uh, so it was a, it was a very uh, circumstantial and propitious event. Once you um, got here and um, you kind of were introduced to your spaces in Deep Ellum, kind of what were, what was, uh, what did you think Deep Ellum was like in the 90s for you? Well, I had a studio on um, East Side, um, you know, just kind of around by, um, oh, what was it, the Mitchell building uh, then. And so <clears throat> I was kind of on the fringe of Deep Ellum you know, kind of in that corner between Deep Ellum and 500X. Um, I'm not, as Nancy will certainly tell you now, I'm not a deeply social person in terms of my, I, I work, um, and I'm serious about my work, but in terms of the club scene and all of that stuff, I just had almost nothing to do with it. So, but Deep Ellum was, in, artistically, um, in terms of galleries, was, was the most interest. I mean, certainly it was the most interesting place uh, in Dallas. Uh, at the time, so um, I liked it. I liked the warehousey stuff. I liked the, I mean, I like I like big empty spaces. So it it appealed to me um, <clears throat> spatially, structurally, industrially, um, and it was good that Nancy was down the street. Your show it was in <coughs> kind of the Sorry. summer of 1990 at, at her gallery. Yeah, I think it was the summer. Um, I had, the first show came after I'd just done a residency in Berlin. Um, and so actually what was quite interesting is that I, Nancy had no idea what I would have um, because all of the work in that show came from the residency in Berlin, which was for six months. Um, so that was another rather interesting thing is that um, I really have no idea what Nancy thought she was getting um, when we first you know, started showing together. But um, <clears throat> that work had been shipped back from, from Germany and actually kind of came in almost the week before the show. Um, so there was just a very hurried uh, installation, which was quite fun. And one of the things that was really interesting was that, um, and in fact, I think it was this figure here that was in the window, hung in the window. Um, and uh, the process of doing that, which um, you know, was done one evening, had, I don't know, maybe 10 or 15 people watching wow. through the window the whole time. It was really quite funny, and you know, people were commenting, and you know, at least I would have had people to help me if I had a problem. But. Kind of with that early um, partnership and friendship that developed, um, how do you feel like that's impacted, or how it did impact your early years um, as an artist <laughs> living in Dallas? And... Well, I think, um, 
you know, interestingly, it was during that, that first period in the 90s that I was kind of moving back and forth between Dallas and Berlin. I did three residencies there um, by 1994. Um, and <clears throat> so, and that was actually sponsoring a tremendous amount of new work. And I think to me what was um, quite important was that Nancy just, just went along with it. Um, I know of a lot of former students and certainly fellow artists who at various times have you know, felt pressure from a gallery. There's been some kind of suggestion of can't you paint the painting that you painted last year or something like that. And one of the remarkable things about Nancy is that I don't think that, um, I think she always had this attitude of, well, gosh, what's going to come next? Um, and never, even though she's a commercial gallery, she's far more dependent than a lot of other places on, on sales and on direct sales to local collectors and stuff. She never, um, that never entered into our relationship. So it was very much, I felt that I could do I could do anything that as an artist I felt I needed to do uh, to further my work, and um, Nancy would be a vehicle for it and would actually attempt to find a, an audience for it. So from that, um, moving um, to her move to the design district, um, what were your thoughts on that, to her moving to this gallery space now? So. Well, that was interesting because <clears throat> Nancy and I, um, I mean, we've been quite good friends for a long time, and. I very distinctly remember, um, as she was talking about that, I mean, she was going through a, an existential crisis. Um, and I think part of it was because of the, the decline of Deep Ellum. Uh, it was getting harder and harder uh, really to get a good flow through and traffic to the gallery. Um, galleries were closing. Um, and. And of course, Dallas is an odd place because you know you always have this. I mean, I, I find it as a, as a um, as an artist. Um, you know, I moved early to Oak Cliff from from the Deep Ellum area, but you always have this real estate crisis um, that you face because where do you go? Um, and she and I talked a lot about it, and actually together we drove a lot of areas, um, kind of imagining what it would be like to have conduit in this space or, um, or somewhere else. And, and the design district was, again, really appealing. Um, A, because the, the real estate situation here was much more open than in other places. So um, it was, um, there was a fair amount of empty space. It wasn't a hot area, and that was, uh, that was a risk. Um, it wasn't a place where you would expect to see galleries, so there was the question if people would come down here. But at the same time, um, it, had, it had raw spaces uh, like this that were, were better. And for me, uh, having done a lot of work in, in Europe, um, it felt to me more, more European, uh, this kind of space versus the deep Ellum space. And um, so I thought, it was a, I thought it was a great move. Um, I had no idea how Nancy was going to absorb the risk of it. Um, and so, uh, Emotionally, I, I was very surprised that she could um, <clears throat> that she could do it uh, because I think it was a big risk at the time. So, kind of now looking um, to where we are today and the mm -hmm. past thirty years of conduit, um, how do you think she's been a force within the Dallas arts community? Well, I think um, you know Nancy is Nancy. I think is relatively unique as a gallerist. Um, she, she has always cultivated um, a very serious kind of collector, um, who, um, but also collectors who weren't necessarily flashy collectors, people, people who had a good sense of their taste and um, had actually supported Dallas artists as well as you know, national and international artists for a long time in their collections. And she was able to cultivate a group of those people that. Um, that I think looked at work in a, in a slightly different way, as well as bringing in young, young people um, who were just starting out. And um, you know, so she's managed to, to create, I mean, I always think of Conduit as, as being very much in a niche. And it's, I mean, for example, I find it interesting that you know, she was the first person to come to the design district, and yet she's still 
on the fringe of the main design district because she didn't you know, move to Dragon Street and, and, and that whole scene. Um, so uh, that's what I, I think that she's been very artist-centric. Um, she's incredibly supportive of the people that she shows, um, but she's also incredibly sensitive to and supportive of the people who collect, um, which I think is interesting. She views them both as a true relationship and not as you know, kind of one to use to get to the other or vice versa. And um, so I think that the longevity of her gallery is because that she's, um, she's that kind of person who, um, who maintains good relationships with both the people that she sells to and the people that she shows. So if there were one thing you could tell us about Nancy that we may not know about her, what would it be? I think one of the things that's interesting is that Nancy has a wicked wit um, and is very, um, can be very sardonic um, at times. And I don't think, uh, you know, because she is such a, a wonderful person when you walk in and she's always enthusiastic, um, there's a side of her that's really, that's really quite fun and, and yeah, it is quite wicked. And, uh, and enjoyable. We want to thank Jay for speaking with us. You can find more information on him at jameswsullivan.com. You can find more information on Conduit at conduitgallery.com. Watch for other episodes about Conduit Gallery over the next few weeks. That's it for Art This Week Bios. Thanks for watching. Still got your polo